Okay. Yep. Uh, Coach Shenanders here. Uh, first question I see. Um, Joe Nugent, WWT. Hey, Eric, I'm curious how you judge a defense's performance. What areas do you think are, are most important as you go back and look at a, a game? Well, number one thing is if we win the game, uh, that's pretty good. <clears throat> um, you know, but you got to – I think you got to take into account what you're trying to uh, what you're trying to get done, and every game's a little differently. Um, you know, there's there's certain stats that everybody's judged on. You know, sometimes sometimes you know you, you keep the points down, the yards are up. Sometimes the yards are way down and the points are up, and there's got to be a good balance. Um, you know, obviously we've we've got to be um, you know a little better on third down, but we're taking the ball away right now and scoring points for our team. Um, so there, there's some good things happening and, and some not so good things happening and that we, we've got to get corrected. But, um, you know, overall, we need to keep the points down and we need to win football games. Sean Callahan, Husker Online. Hey, Coach, um, did you guys give out the black shirts this week? And if you did, can you name the guys uh, that you gave black shirts to? Um, I, I did. We did give out some black shirts this week. Uh, I thought the guys... You know, they, they finally practiced the way we wanted them to last week. And, and you know, we had a, a pretty good performance. And the black shirts need to set a new standard. Um, to be honest with you, you know, if you want to ask the guys about it, that's fine. I think that we, we live in a, in a world where um, the black shirts mean more to me than, than me, social media. And Twitter doesn't have to know about everything. And... Um, you know, and I think it's a special thing right now. And I think, you know, if you want to ask those kids about who got them, that's great. Um, but right now, it's a, it's it's an it's an in-house kind of situation where um, this tradition just means more to me than than having to put everything on social media right now. Andrew Ward, KL, KN. Hey, Eric. I know that Ben Stilley had the big play um, to end the game on on Saturday, but just what kind of role has he played with the bringing up of those younger defensive linemen? Ben's done a great job with, um, you know, he, he's been here for um, a long time now, five years, and he's kind of he's kind of seen the ups and downs, and uh, he's been, you know, one of the the only D linemen that's been in the room. You know, there's a couple other ones, but you know, one of the only ones that's been in the room for all three years since we've been here, and he's he's starting to really understand the system and what we're trying to get done. And he's done a great job of helping those young kids develop their technique and their, their knowledge of the system. Um, so I really appreciate what he does with those guys. I mean, he's in there watching film with them all the time and um, they're asking him questions. If they can't find coach Toyota or coach Washington or myself, they're, they're asking him and he's, you know, he's got them up there um, studying film on the opponent. So he's done a great job with those young guys. Sam McEwen, Omaha World Herald. Eric, thanks for doing this. Hey, you guys have uh, have have used a lot of different personnel in that front seven, uh, but I've noticed, and I think other reporters have noticed it. Sometimes you'll have two defensive linemen in, and maybe um, five linebackers. How how did you guys kind of develop um, how you're how you're rotating your front three slash slash front four this year, and how you're determining the personnel? Because it, it seems to have been effective, and it's also a little bit different than what you've done in the past. Yeah, I think it's kind of what we've always wanted to get to. Um, you know, a, a big contributing factor in that is uh, just developing depth on our football team. Um, you know, there's been there's been times in in our our tenure that we've had to leave a lot of guys out there for a lot of snaps, and I, I truly believe that the more guys you can play in a football game, um, the better each one of them plays. You know, there's certain guys obviously that you want out there for more snaps than others, but usually when that that starter, whoever your starter is, even if he's a, a Pro Bowler or whatever, he's not going to play as good on rep seven as a as the next guy will be on his play one. So we want to try to keep those guys fresh. Um, like I said developing depth. Another reason is there's guys that have earned the right to play through their practice habits um, and just what they've done when they've got their chances in the football game. And, you know, I, I really like it right now because it's it's creating a, you know, very, very uh, energetic, competitive spirit in practice. Guys are hungry for reps. And, you know, some of the older guys know that the boogeyman's coming to get them if, uh, 
if they don't do their job because these young guys are really pushing the envelope right now. So it's developing a, a good sense of, uh, of, of competition and practice. But once again, those guys have earned the right to play. Um, and, and like you said, there's certain packages we want to deploy versus certain personnel groups the offense is putting out there down and distance specific and all those types of things. Um, so just the more things we can do with those guys and the more they understand, the better we're going to be on defense. Do you call that a 2-4-5 or a 2-5-4? What, how should we refer to that? that setup when it's just two down linemen and, and all the linebackers. Now that you guys call it all kinds of stuff, I don't, I don't call it anything, but um, we just call that's our nickel set right now. Uh, and, and basically, you know, just like, you know, if you, if you've watched, you know, the Alabamas and the Georgias over the years and many other, even Wisconsin, um, you know, when, when they get in their nickel personnel grouping, those outside backers truly become the defensive ends and those defensive ends in the three, four truly become the, the defensive tackles and the, the nose guard in the, in the three technique. Um, you know, it's just in 11 personnel and 10 personnel, you're getting more to four down defense, more what you would call four, two, five or four, three defense, depending on what you call Jojo. Some people call him a nickel. Some people call him a linebacker in that set. Um, but that, that, that's our, our version of four down spacing. Um, so wh whatever you guys want to call it, I call it nickel. Parker Gabriel. Yeah, Eric, I was going to ask about uh, Jojo. He's played pretty much every snap for you defensively. And I know you talked about him, you know, his ceiling being whatever he wanted it to be before the season. Have you seen him take that step toward playing more within the system because clearly the big playability is still there too. Yeah, he's, he's done, uh, he's done a really nice job of, of playing within the system uh, and he's taken steps in the right direction. I still think the ceiling's high for him. I still think you haven't necessarily seen the, the best version of Jojo Doman that you can, um, but he's playing really good football right now and he's, uh, he's doing his job. He's, he's, he hasn't, he hasn't been, uh, you know, going rogue or anything like that. He's, he's playing within the defense and he's making, the plays when his number's called. Um, and I think, you know, when you're a really good football player, that's what you do. You, you, you help other, other people, other teammates make plays when their number's called. And then when your number gets called, you make one. Um, but I still don't think we've, any of us have seen the, the ceiling on Jojo Doman yet. Evan Bland, World Herald. Hey, Eric, just wanted to ask you about Illinois. Uh, they haven't announced a quarterback for the weekend and, and it seems like whoever they have out there really uh, they have a, a different kind of offense for that I'm just curious uh, how fine is the line uh, as far as when you guys prepare uh, from going too far down the rabbit hole uh, preparing for one guy as opposed to just kind of working on what you guys do best in your base stuff yeah and I don't, I don't think it's um, you know it's not like a whole grade uh, switch in their offense you know obviously there's different tweaks when number one's in the football game and when Peter's in the football game there's different tweaks involved so we've got to just tweak our scheme a little bit but you know like I've told you guys before I think you know we see a, a running quarterback quite a bit you know obviously we've seen Adrian and Luke quite a bit and Logan Smothers uh, so we've, we've got some uh, experience defending the quarterback run uh, our guys know that things are going to change a little bit depending on who's in the football game um, but they've also got to get ready for anything I, I don't think um, you know, it's not like when, when Isaiah Williams is in there, he's, he's not going to throw the football. And it's not like when Peters is not, he can pull the ball and make you pay now. He, he can run the football too. So I think you got to be ready for the whole package. Just, just you know, understand the, tw the tweaks that are going in when each guy gets in the football game. A couple more quick ones for Coach here. Uh, Steve Sipple, Journal Star. Hi, Coach. Uh, Nebraska's Lubick was asked about this too. Nebraska has been outscored 59 to six in the second half. Is that a stat that gets the staff's attention? Is it discussed much? Why or why or why not? Uh, yeah, I think you're always trying to figure out, you know, what, what your deficiencies are. Um, you know, how can you make things better? Uh, you know, a big focus for us last week was starting fast and not let, not um, you know getting off the field early on the first uh, first drive of the game and the first drive of the second half, which we've done. And now we just have to finish finish football games. And I think we did a good job at the end of the game. It was now it's kind of turned into the focus of you know in the in the middle in the middle of the third quarter to kind of the middle of the fourth quarter, uh, and just just playing with the same intensity that we play with throughout that first half and throughout the beginning of the third quarter. Um, 
I don't think it's it's scheme or anything like that. I think it's just we've got to be dialed in and we've got to play complementary football. And that's, you know, when the offense gets a three and out, defense got to get the ball back. You know, when the defense gets a turnover, the offense, you know, they have to score a touchdown. When there's a good or bad play on special teams, offense or defense have to respond. Um, so complementary football is a, is a huge, huge piece to finishing football games, especially in the second half. From a layman's point of view, it looked like your safeties played well. Was that a good day <clears throat> for your veteran safeties? Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I thought. Um, you know, I thought everyone in the back end played played a really good football game. You know, I thought. You know, across the board, there there obviously there's things to fix. There's no doubt about it. But um, guys played really hard. Um, they're playing physical right now. They're tackling good. Uh, but those safeties in the, in the corners did a great job, especially you know towards the end of the game. We put them in a lot of uh, man coverage situations, and they they answered the bell. So I was very proud of the way that those guys those guys responded. Uh, last one for Coach, uh, Brian Christopherson, 24-7. Hey, Eric, that's kind of a follow-up to what Sipple's just asking. I was going to ask about Deontay Williams specifically and the not just the play he had, but a guy who, you know, came back from not playing at all last season. Um, just what what it's like for as a coach to see see a guy like that work his way back and, and play like he is now. Oh, I'd say it's uh... – you know, it's 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 a really good thing to see him come back, and and not just because he helps our team, which he certainly does, but just to see a guy to, that loves football, you know, lose the ability to play football because of something out of his own control, and then being able to rehab that injury, get his surgery, stay locked in, stay part of the team, be a good teammate, continue to learn football and study film, and then have a chance to come back this year and play well. Is, is really is really exciting for me just just because I'm, I'm so happy for the young guy um, you know I'm happy for me and the rest of the guys too because he makes us a better football team but I'm just I'm really happy for him that he gets to continue to do something he loves when it was taken away from him um, out of his own control last year so you know it's just it's awesome to be around him every day all right thank you coach thanks guys right, thanks we'll guys have, uh, coach Beckton next